Excellent news. Excellent news courtesy of Wall Street Journal. This is pretty dope, isn't it? Pretty dope news. But I guess if you're a fan of Noah, you're going to be a little bit upset because inevitably this is going to definitely take away from the quality of product that you're going to get in the main Noah brand. But hey, onwards and upwards. So this is courtesy of the Wall Street Journal. It says the following. J. Crew naming former Supreme designer to disrupt brand. Brendan Babsian, veteran streetwear pioneer, is being hired to push the limits of the preppy retail designs. If you're familiar, J. Crew. Um, the only time I, I, I uh, J. Crew was actually a big thing was when that lady was there. Was it Jenna Lyons, right? When she was really kind of pushing that thing forward. Um, when they were doing copious amounts of great New Balance collaborations. Um, you know, oh yeah, their New Balance collaborations were sick. I've actually, I'm actually still having. I've, hey, I got them up here. Look how great the new the J. Crew New Balance collaborations were back in the day. Like really, like just tastefully done. This is not back in it's like you know only a couple of years ago, but still tastefully done collaborations where they take like an existing model from New Balance from Nike and just update the colorway in a very classic way. Obviously, you got this great Nike kill shot there. Probably one of the better um, tennis shoes that Nike have actually put out. Sometimes the front of them can be a bit frumpy, but I like the overall shape of these. Right, just done in a nice white and pine green colorway where there's some uh, gray accents you'd call them on the mud guard the lace stays and the hill tab at the back then you've got another collaboration here with new balance also just a very nicely done um what model is this 998 yeah 998 in a navy colorway with some nice white laces to kind of offset all of it on the middle so just fairly done right you can already see the kind of um taste level what comes with them when they're putting together collaborations right it's always kind of very muted colorways it's just done on updated models and something that you can obviously see you wearing with a pale with a pair of tailored slacks you know with a double-breasted jacket right very very well done um another one here an m998 independence day model which might be one of my favorites actually with the white and the red there right just very very expertly done um, so yeah, um, just to, you know, a great brand that kind of lost its way over the years, and it looks like they're tapping one of maybe the better or maybe one of the best uh, streetwear designers out there, uh, Brendan Babson, who's a former designer of Supreme. Um, maybe was responsible for some of my greatest pieces from Supreme, pieces that I probably would still go back and rebuy. Um, uh, an example being this, the following. Brendan Babson was at Supreme when he designed this, right? The Supreme Vento Parker from 2009, um, you know, famously modeled by Aaron Bondaroff in that lookbook, right? Classic, classic jacket. One of my, you know, you know, favorite jackets I've got from Supreme. I've actually got a picture of me wearing uh, a jacket, actually. Yeah, no, that's that's the, what was that one? That's a Wilderness Parker. I've actually got a picture of me wearing the, the Vento. Yep, that's me wearing the Vento jacket back in the day. That's me wearing the Vento jacket as well back in the day. Where is it there? Can you see me? Let's get this out of the way. 2009. You see that? 2009. On this fit here, I've got some vintage, right? Vintage Bruins, like old school Bruins. You can actually see they were actually a bit too small for me. There's a little bit of a bulge sticking out there. But these Bruins are from like the 70s when they were originally made. Like, and I sold them. Such an idiot. Um, with some uh, Levi's jeans, uh, Ventil Parker. I got a denim Ralph Lauren shirt there with maybe a hundred white tee under the end. Remember that was a big thing people used to do. You'd wear like a baggy shirt with like a white tee underneath and have the bottom bit sticking out a little bit. Uh, the Ventil Parker there in an XL. Um, I got a Supreme. If I'm not mistaken, that's a 13 backpack 13th i think or 12th one of them it's like a turtle show it comes in a gray a chocolate brown and also a black um so that was me wearing that so that he's responsible for one of those he's also responsible for obviously the wilderness parker which was maybe one of my favorite uh parkers of all time i want to definitely buy this back sometime in the future obviously i had this colorway here the red and uh, the red and navy as you can see me wearing a red and navy there with some padmore and barnes wallabies that were again too small for me that's a classic thing of me back in the day I used to always wear shoes that were too small <laughs> look at my feet bulging out there. look how look how this this shape uh, misshapen they are there my my toes all sticking out on that bit there and then i've got some unico oh these were when U unico did those amazing chinos these chinos are like um what were they oh they had, some, they had an amazing gold button fly um uh, really nice snap buttons. They're just a really heavy weight to them. They didn't obviously keep making them that way because I'm sure they were probably fairly expensive to make them in that way. Let's get rid of that sign there. And then, of course, we're in the Wilderness Parker with, if I'm not mistaken, uh, what was that brand that made them? Um, the Oxford shirts. 
I forgot, but some brand that used to collaborate with Supreme that made the office shirts, I wore wearing that as well in the in-between there. Like, I used to love this shit, man. I used to love it. So, yeah, so, so Brendan Babbage, I'm very familiar with him. Again, like I said, he was definitely responsible for some of my greater Supreme moments and definitely pieces that I definitely would go back and wear nowadays. So, to see him get tapped by J. Crew makes complete sense considering the kind of stuff that they do, considering what he's done, obviously, with Noah. Just look at what he's wearing there in terms of a fit. That could easily fit into what J. Crew doing going forward. But, like I said, if you're a fan of J. Crew, or so if you're a fan of Noah, you're going to be a little bit nervous because this might mean that the quality of Noah's output might be a little bit, you know, it might diminish over the time because unfortunately, no matter how creative Brendan Babb is in, which I'm not assuming he isn't, um, there's no way that you can, you know, adequately um, allocate your resources to two projects at the same level of output just not going to be able to do you know, you're not going to be able to do it it's just one of those things something's going to give it's obviously beneficial to keep yourself you know going with different creative projects on the go as much as you can because one one project can also inform another but in terms of actually you know affecting your bread and butter which is Noah it's definitely going to affect it but I think going forward, it's going to be great to see uh, Brendan Babbage's vision for streetwear, um, given the platform, large platform of J. Crew has, and maybe affect change in a really meaningful way. Right? He might alter the cut of a pant, and that might go into informing the cut of a pant for seasons and years to come. It could be a whole completely different thing that changes. So I'm really for it. So let's read the article itself. It says J. Crew Group Inc., the retailer known for its preppy styles, is turning to an occasional mohawk sporting designer with a skateboarding pedigree to revive the struggling brand the company on monday is naming brendan babson as co-owner of the culturally um new york menswear label noah and longtime design director at the pioneering streetwear brand supreme to the role of j crew men's creative director which is awesome his first design will hit stores in this at the second half of 2022 so it's awesome too that they just got him to do the menswear they didn't try and spread and thin by doing the women's wear also which he, i'm sure he probably could have done but wouldn't have really kind of uh Landed within an expert skill set. Uh, Mr. Babbage and Hire is a sharp turn for J. Crew, which emerged as a retail force in the 90s for defining the preppy dress code of the upper middle class Americans. A 49 year old native Long Island made his name in fashion during 14 years of Supreme, whose t shirts and hoodies bo um, bearing the company's bright red and white box circles have a cult like following among young adults. It says the following We need to disrupt the business, said J. Crew's chief executive, Libby Waddle, who took over the retail in November after it emerged from bankruptcy. Yeah, true, innit? It was on the brink of bankruptcy and it just got saved them if i'm not mistaken at the last minute man so it's amazing to see that going forward so we'll see an updated looks on this sort of j crew you know what i mean this sort of preppy appeal um j crew filed for bankruptcy protection last year after a long period of declining sales and management turnover the company was late to adapt as more shoppers shifted to fast fashion chains and online shopping it also has been criticized for being out of step with the consumer trends uh, starting in 2008 under the guidance of menswear designer frank mutants um j crew steered at a clothing direct clothing towards italian fabric dress shirts and it uh, <coughs> leather dress shoes and slender suits by around 2010 men's fashion shifted towards streetwear and sneakers and j crew was slow to keep up oh yeah true imagine imagine you hire this guy to do to kind of redesign the j crew menswear and then he starts and it goes off pretty well don't get me wrong 2008 might have been a bit late for the whole italian thing right um the slender cuts and uh what those called um all those shoes with the two straps on it but it's a bit late for that kind of thing and then suddenly 2010 everyone's wearing jeans and new era hats it's like oof off, off, off. Um, Mr. Waddle, who previously headed Madwell and J. Crew's Denim Focus sub label, said the classic styles will continue to be important to J. Crew's menswear business. At the same time, she's looking for Mr. Babian to push the limits of his designs. Mr. Babian said that he was trying to strike a balance between the eccentricities and the broad taste of shoppers who visit the chain's 150 stores, often in search for button down shirts for the office. He said his visions for J. Crew will focus on fundamental pieces, echoing the clean cut American look and the brand pushed throughout the 80s. Mr. Babian and said J. Crew's catalogs, which he first discovered as a friend's house in the mid 1980s, were really inspirational to him as a designer. Mr. Babbin intends to place the brand's no fuss basics front and center again, which is true. If you think about Noah's aesthetics and you think about what J. Crew wants to do, they're quite interlinked, right? There's a lot of synergy there. And if you think, and if he just focuses on making sure the button down Oxfords, the chinos, um, the light colored denims, um, the chino shorts, the cargo shorts, uh, maybe a classic pair of shoes, like maybe similar to like a, you know, like a deck shoe, like he kind of update that look and has like maybe two or three shoes that fit really well within the whole wardrobe, a nice overcoat, 
double-breasted jacket, whatever. There, there are staples of in that preppy look that, you know, a, a great beanie that just comes in season in, season out. People like a great pullover hoodie that he could do really well in if he just kind of nails those. And then, of course, sprinkles some eccentric pieces here and there. But if he just nails the ability of, to, of getting those kind of, you know, those um, quintessential... Uh, preppy wardrobe staples he's going to be a great success at J.Crew I don't deny it but again like I said will it negatively affect Noah at least in kind of you know who knows I wonder if they're going to continue doing the sneaker collaborations whether or not he's actually in charge of the sneaker collaborations or whether the sneaker collaborations come out of the someone else's umbrella. I'm not too sure, but they keep, you know, they keep pumping them out. But the, that era previously where they were doing, again, like I said, like that Nike kill shot, yeah? Like really, really good, right? Like really, really nice, nicely, nicely done. So I wonder if he's going to be in charge of doing those things also. I'm not too sure, but it continues here. Can someone walk in to a store and take something as simple as a chino and a t-shirt and make it look good? He said, it'll be my job to show people how to do that. He plans to keep the brand's popular slim fitting Ludlow suit, though he said he would look into adding new fits and even pleated pants for consumers who prefer looser fits mr waddle said that the coming of the pandemic shoppers are looking for more relaxed silhouettes of course definitely because everyone's put on a bit of weight it would be awesome if he's able to design like the quintessential oxford shirt that works really well in terms of nine to, in terms of your day-to-day -day work and also able to go out with it that would be awesome to be able to kind of meld those two things or you know mesh those two things that'd be flipping amazing mr babians will continue to operate noah alongside his wife estelle bailey babson also noah is the more grown up label than Supreme offering striped dress shirts, cashmere suits, uh, beachy striped tees, Noah's $52 pocket tees, and 128 trip pinstripe uh, button ups are nearly double the price of similar styles at J. Crew. Um, but I do remember what's a classic thing that I remember him. The one piece I remember, because I, um, if I'm not mistaken, Brendan did start Noah when he was at Supreme, but then put it on ice. Then when he left, he's restarted it again. And if I'm not mistaken, there's one quintessential piece that I've not been able to find. If I don't know if you're a Supreme fanatic, then you know it. But Supreme did this Parker. Maybe it was in the early 2000s. It was like a fisherman's Parker that had like big, uh, big stripes. So it was like a white and navy stripe like across the body. And it was like a fisherman's Parker classic. That to me is what I would un is what I would kind of use as an example of what um, Brendan could possibly do at J Crew, because um, already you saw some of the codes that he was kind of you know sprinkling in with some of the stuff that he did obviously when he was at Supreme. But that Supreme jacket, I can't find out which one it was, but it was a kind of fisherman's jacket. Definitely had a hood on it, and it had massive uh, stripes going across it in navy and white. And I think the other colorway might have been yellow and something else, but it was a classic, classic jacket. If someone can find it where it is, definitely let me know because I want to add it to my, um, you know, stuff that I want to buy in the future, grail list and stuff. It says, yeah, Mr. Ballion said that he intends to take J. Crew into a Noah pricing tier. Oh, he doesn't intend to take it. Okay, thank God. Uh, but the, the pricing was a continuing discussion. Him and Mr. Waddle said that they were both focused first on raising the quality of J. Crew styles. Noah is also known for more um, autonomous hair designs like a 1498 cheetah print overcoat and a punkish 80 dollar 88 dollar pink and black sneakers made in collaboration with vans mr babian said that he's eager to sprinkle some of his unexpected elements into jacob's collections he says i'm still me my design sensibility isn't going to change mr babian said who during his first interview um who during his first interview wore a 1980s era log jacket made out of skateboard company Pal Parata. He says it's got a lot more rope and room to push. Oh, awesome. So imagine that. Imagine he's able to make an Oxford jacket with gussets and stuff and, you know, um, a different sort of cut so that if you work in a construction or you work somewhere, would you wear an, an Oxford shirt for construction? Probably you would, right? But so you can move your arms a little bit more, maybe a chino, uh, chino shorts that would look great in the office and also outside the office i see a lot of scope for some really interesting stuff going forward then he did another interview here it looks like with gq it looks like also so let's definitely double check that and see what he said in the gq interview let's pause this we don't want that to play i hate all these autoplay videos this is really crappy when they do that sort of stuff and these autoplay videos and websites because they use those stats of you play because basically what they do to be cheeky is that these brands and these websites, in order to get more sponsorship, they'll use the fact that you clicked on an article and the video replayed automatically. And sometimes they have these really cheeky websites where they refresh in the background by themselves if you keep them idle. So it refreshes every five minutes if you've got a tab open. So effectively what that means is that on their end, analytics wise, you basically press play on this video, you know, 17 million times and they add it to their numbers so that when they make in a deck and they want to get more sponsorship, the numbers are inflated. The people will be like, oh, wow, you got like, you know, uh, 1 billion views on the videos. It's like, no, they didn't. No one watched it 1 billion times. They just had it embedded in a flipping article like this 
this or that. It has no correlation to what ASAP Rocky is talking about. It's super annoying. But anyway, we digress. Um, he says, duh, 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 duh. yeah, so this is what Brendan said to GQ directly via email. He said, um, more than anything, I think I'm bringing a youthful spirit, but with experience. He says, there's no plans to reinvent the brand, according to Babington, who will take the chains off a bit and get a bit creative. So it's awesome to see. So there's definitely feels that there's going to be some battle with the pricing, but I think it should be good. Um, he says here, my friends and I wore mixed traditional items, which were often J. Crew with brands we loved uh, from surf and the skate world. It wasn't uncommon to be wearing J. Crew chinos and pullovers and windbreakers with a sushi hat. And that probably would sound crazy to a young person today. But if you look back at old photos, you'll see it. Of course. And that's what I said I did, right? That's what I did. I've got I've got J. Crew, well, our version is maybe Uniqlo, but I'm essentially wearing, you know, basic stuff that you'd get maybe in the high street and also mixing it in with like actual brand brand stuff, right? So it's like a let's say for instance, that's a uni that's a Uniqlo Chino and that's a shirt from J. Crew mixed in with a piece from Supreme. People used to do that all the time. Nowadays I guess kids are probably more head to toe designer, but we used to be a little bit way more creative back in the day, innit? Way, way, way more creative. Um it continues here. Ba 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 of course that's how today's customer style dress too. Um but ba, ba, what else did you say here? To be honest, I thought it'd be no chance that it would really come together, he said, when I asked about his new partnership, I assumed I was one of many being considered. It's actually quite gnarly, right? That you spend your entire life kind of designing and being informed by this, you know, high street, you know, retail chain, doing your own thing. And then little by little, over time, you then become one of the perfect candidates for the role in question. Now, who knows? Maybe this is part of their designer, you know, um, story. After the fact, everyone's got, like, a, whenever someone gets a collaboration with a brand, the first thing they say is, oh, my God, I remember when I was a kid, I used to wear Reebok to the school. And, you know what I mean? Everyone's got some sort of, you know, dumbass story like that. So maybe he's lying. But I don't. it doesn't strike me like that. Well, I've met Brett. Brett I met Noah. No, I met Brendan um, a couple of times when I went to New York, specifically when I worked for this company and we were doing an online streetwear course and I had to go to the store with a few of my other colleagues and we spoke to him and a few of the staff members there and they couldn't be nicer. Like legitimately some of the best people that I've ever met in streetwear, people that will legitimately, um, you know, make you a little bit more hopeful of the future because one of the best, one of the worst things that you can do if you're a fan of streetwear is to go into a retail store and ask questions and be like inquisitive and interested in things you're into because you're going to be met with a wall of just you know bad vibes and icing you out similar to what skate stores do when the first time you go there right they give you you know they, they kind of ice you out a bit and look at you with you know uh, look down upon you and make you kind of you know question your sanity because they want to make sure that you're the right kind of person and you're not coming in there for the wrong reasons which is absolutely insane but they were nice off the bat off the bat and they didn't know us too we didn't introduce ourselves straight away we kind of walked in just had a peruse around and it was so nice the whole staff like he hires really well like everyone that works in noah like is a kind of reflection of basically brendan and basically what he's doing with that brand so i'm not i, I wouldn't be surprised if you know the, the thing is complete success going forward i really wouldn't be um Blah, blah, blah. no more comment there for Brendan so yeah definitely check that out when that gets announced um for sure that's going to be something that a lot of people are going to be excited about 